Hey and welcome to this video that will walk you through the application of your product. When you want to strengthen or extend your natural nails, it's important for good durability that the shape of the nail is built correctly. You can imagine a bit that the nail is like a bridge. If the bridge must bear the weight it needs to carry, then it requires strong points. Same applies to the nail. If not, it breaks slightly or the product comes off quickly, not lasting. To get a full rundown of the theory behind nail construction, it's a good idea to read the section in the theory book about construction. But to summarize it briefly, there are three rules of thumb that are particularly important. First of all, the nail needs to be shaped so that it has a smooth curve from cuticle to tip. And the top point of this bow is called the apex, and that's what they call the nail strength point. Apex makes sure that it can handle all the everyday bumps, hits and strains without breaking. It's important to focus on making a nice arch with the apex, ensuring your nail has strength. Secondly, it's important to focus on filing the undersides of the nail, the lower arches, to file them evenly to support the nail and withstand impact. Undersides of nail must not be curved, also must not have bend, point upwards or downwards. Ideally, file horizontally with the natural nail for optimal balance. Also, evenly place the product across the entire nail for the best results and ensure an even application. No products on one side, but not on the right side. No product on the tip of the nail, but not so much on the actual nail bed. Collection and bunch should be avoided. As a rule of thumb, there should be a minimum of 1 mm of product over the entire nail to ensure a balanced buildup. And of course, there should be more where the apex is to be made up. So please be extra careful to ensure enough on the sides of the nail, because that's usually where you end up making the nail too thin. That makes the nail most likely to break where the natural nail separates from the skin and becomes the free edge. To avoid that, it's important for a good and lasting outcome that you're careful to follow our instructions and make an effort to perform all steps correctly. If unsure about anything or need guidance, don't hesitate to reach out to us for assistance along the way. Enjoy yourself to the fullest. Prior to starting to reinforce your nails with polygel, make sure to prep your brush so you are prepared when you need it. What you do is you take your brush, a wipe, a dab dash, and pour some cleaner into it. Then you simply gently wipe the brush in the cleaner so that all the bristles get moistened. So you carefully wipe it off with a lint-free wipe. Now the brush is prepared to be used with polygel. The next thing you gotta do is to perform an efficient prep. I've already done a prep. You can see how to make an efficient prep by going to the video guide on prep or look it up in our theory book and find the step-by-step -step guide on prep. After prep, we just need to use base coat, really. It's that simple. When you apply base coat, you should only apply it in a pretty thin layer. So you open your bottle and roll your brush up one side of the bottle, the other side and the other side. And then you proceed by simply going ahead and pushing one of those tiny little beads up towards the desired direction. When you possess this small treasure of a product, you position it in the center of the nail, surrounding the cuticle. And then you just have to gently push your brush downwards towards it a bit to achieve the desired effect. The tape that belongs to the individual. Consequently, at this point in time, we are making a transition to the opposite side. Over to the other side. The crucial aspect when applying base code is that you do it in dabbing motions. So instead of simply floating the base coat on, you sort of nudge it into the nail. The base coat is present to ensure that all your subsequent products can adhere very well to the natural nail. So by buffing, you kind of obtain a very good grip on the natural nail. Once you've tucked it into the nail plate, you also need to remember to always seal the free edge. We perform this action in order to prevent dirt, liquids and other substances from entering the space between the natural nails and the product when we use our hands in our daily activities. So always fasten the base coat securely and thoroughly into a very, very, very thin layer. 
and always remember to seal the open edge. I perform the same action on the remaining four fingers. I've applied base coat to all five nails, now they just need to go in the lamp and cure for a minute. When all five nails have cured for 60 seconds, there will be a plug-in layers, or a very thin, sticky layer on the surface of the nail. It's totally normal, and it must not be removed. The sticky layer is there so that the next layer, which is polygel in this case, will adhere even better to the base coat. After curing your base coat, you can proceed to the next step. We are about to strengthen our nails using polygel, and I will apply the color Milky Pink for a beautiful manicure. The first thing you gotta do is grab your polygel and polygel spatula and squeeze out a little bead onto the spatula. You have to envision that this pearl should have the capability to completely cover the entire surface of the nail. So we extract a small gem. Position it on the spatula, then let's simply eliminate our polygel, and then we position the bead in the center of the nail, up around the cuticle at this location. And then we can put our brush to use. The great thing about polygel is that it stays where you put it. It doesn't flow in the same way like melted gel, if you know what I mean. It's sitting exactly where I placed it, you know. To shape it around the nail, Take your brush and dip it in cleaner liquid, then apply it around the nail using the brush, exactly the same way as when we prepared the brush to begin with. Because Polygel needs the brush to be clean so it doesn't stick to your brush. The important thing is when you're shaping this little pearl of Polygel around the nail, that you do it in dabbing motions. That it's not smooth movements like you might be used to with nail polish or regular gel polish but that you dub it around on the nail or like push it around in a circular motion. To begin, I will utilize my cuticle pusher to gently push back my cuticles, ensuring a neat and tidy nail appearance. So let us commence by attaining a lovely, seamless and precise transition all the way down to the cuticle area of the nail. And of course, it is important that you never hit the cuticle, but get as close as possible without touching it because it looks nice and natural and you achieve a smooth and seamless transition, which enhances the overall appearance of the nails. So I am merely pushing my luck around, really, just trying my luck and seeing what happens. And ensure to examine it from various perspectives and make certain that the appropriate regions are included in your analysis. Take care to thoroughly evaluate the subject matter from different angles, ensuring comprehensive coverage of all relevant areas. If it starts to get difficult to model it, or if the polygen starts sticking to the brush, you can always just put it back in the cleaner liquid and quickly wipe it off with your wipe and just continue once more. As soon as your polygel comes into contact with the cleanser liquid, it becomes super easy to shape around. In my opinion, I have successfully undergone a smooth transition to the natural nail and at present, I am endeavoring to move this bead down along the sides of the nail. It is truly just about having a little bit of patience and taking the time that it takes for you to feel like you have accomplished and attained the ideal shape that you desire in your journey. Now I begin dabbing it even further down the entire length of the nail. And it is crucial when you place your polygel to keep the strength points of the nail in mind during the application process. Despite the fact that you are merely amplifying, it is of utmost importance that you have a smooth, small and aesthetically pleasing arch up here, or with a peak known as the apex. Apex is the strongest point of the nail. Therefore, you can already begin shaping your polygel in that manner, so it possesses a pleasant smooth curve and a well-defined apex and some good strengths, meaning that the product is evenly distributed all over the nail, meaning that there are no areas where there is no product or much less product than in another area, for example, but that it all lies nicely and evenly. And the advantage of polygel here is precisely that it doesn't budge. 
so you can take as much time as you want and as much time as you think it takes to get this shape absolutely perfect. If you don't think it's perfect, you can always tweak the product afterwards and that's what we do too. No matter what, just make a random adjustment. You don't need to think that your surface has to be entirely smooth and flat. We always feel that way, but it is advantageous to establish a solid foundation for your fitness and strengths, so that you only have to file as lightly as possible in the subsequent steps where you need to file. At this moment, I'm nearing the end of my rope and feeling a sense of desperation. And I truly want to ensure that the product is released on the edge so that we can once again navigate the free edge, just like we previously did with the base coat. So we need to make sure that there is also product all the way to the tip so that dirt, liquids, and all sorts of other things in everyday life can't slide in between the product and the road. So I am just going to ensure that I smooth out a small amount of poly gel on the tip of the free edge in this particular area. So that's how it appeared. We possess the product ourselves, positioned on the outskirts. Now I've sculpted my poly gel gem onto the entire nail and I believe it has turned out to be quite nice for now. I have checked and it seems like the product is pretty much the same everywhere I look without any significant variations or discrepancies that I have a smooth and seamless transition to the natural nail down here at the cuticle area and that I possess a product available on the open edge. It does not matter that there are a small number of tiny little bumps on top or on the surface of your polygel material. It is nearly impossible to make it entirely smooth. We will handle that in the case subsequently. The most important thing is simply that the foundation for this good structure with focal points and apex is in place so that we have the ability to adjust and perfect it if necessary. So now I'm gonna move on and do the same on the other four nails. If you're thinking now, that you want to ensure that the plaster you have just applied does not move. Can you utilize our flash cure function in the UV lamp? As I said, polygel stays where it should, so it stays in place where you put it. But when you're sitting there working on the remaining four nails, you might just be unlucky and accidentally hit it, causing it to fall out of position again. So you can just make a quick flash cure, which is a 10 second program, where the lamp blinks for five seconds. So it does a fairly brief surface hardening and there is no danger of you being clumsy and simply knocking it out of shape once more. So I'm simply going to do a fast flash cure on this finger and then I will proceed to building up poly gel on the remaining four fingers. She has done a flash cure and I can move on to the remaining four fingers. If you happen to realize along the way that you've gotten a bit too close to the cuticle area, it is super easy to remove it by taking your cuticle stick and just gently scraping off this poly gel if you've gotten a bit too close and accidentally applied it on the skin surrounding the nail. It's crucial that the product doesn't touch the skin and if it does, remove it quickly. You always have the option to remove a product if you feel like there is a bit too much. Can you simply take your brush and scrape off that small piece that you believe was excessive? In all other cases, just proceed with executing the identical method on each and every individual nail without any deviations or alterations to the process that has been previously established and implemented. I've now shaped all five nails with my poly gel as well as I possibly could. I have laid the groundwork for our strengths and apex, which is the foundation of the nail, providing a solid base for our endeavors. Now I desire it in the lamp for a minute prior to we are able to proceed to the subsequent step. Now we have a minute in the lamp and we can go to the next step. 
Prior to filing the shape, we should begin by removing the sticky layer, known as the sticky layer, using a product called Clean. We perform that action simply to, well, when we are on the verge of working on our product, it is quite inconvenient that it sticks in place and hinders our progress. Let's remove the sticky layer first. So let's obtain a nail file. You have the option to utilize a manual nail file with grit 100 and 180, for example, or if you possess an electric nail file, it will be a more efficient and often much easier method to use for filing your nails. Our current focus is on perfecting this setup. We have put in our best efforts using our poly gel to build the shape as nicely as we can. But achieving a completely smooth and even texture with the poly gel is proving to be quite challenging. That's why we're going straight for it with the file. What we focus on is making the transition really, really smooth from the product to the natural nail. And also just in general that it has the same thickness across the entire nail. So you don't have an area that is much thicker than the other. So I just want to go over all my nails with the electric nail file, really. You have to be careful to remember that you shouldn't file too much on the tip and preferably not too much under the edges either because we have sealed the free edge here now and if you file too much on this free edge you will actually remove the seal you just made. So primarily on top to perfect the structure and make the bow here and apex really stand out well and thoroughly. I will do that now and utilize my dust collector at the same time so dust does not go everywhere. I have completed the filing process to the best of my ability using my electric nail file. It is always a highly recommended idea to take the final step exclusively with a manual nail file. Therefore, I remove my dust collector and carefully go through all five nails once again to ensure perfection. The easiest and most convenient way to shape and smooth the edges or sides of the nail is by filing them manually. I would also like to simply file a little bit out here but once again, be extremely careful not to file too much, so we do not remove the seal from the free edge. Ultimately, we have the capability to simply take our buffer and file the surface, thereby ensuring that it is transformed into a state of complete smoothness and sleekness. It is exactly like that, so we provide it with the ultimate finishing touch to ensure perfection in every detail. It's also really good to simply file down underneath in case you happen to have acquired a small amount of dust or some residue beneath your nail. At this point, the only thing that remains is to grab a snag-free white, apply some cleaner to it and eliminate all the dust from the nail which has accumulated a significant amount of dust after we just completed this final case. Therefore, let's proceed with removing the dust from the nail to ensure it is completely clean and free of any debris. And now we're ready for the next step. Now that we have filed and eliminated the dust, it is time to apply our very first coat of gel polish to the nails. And before you start applying the gel polish, you just need to mix the color pigments. They can actually sink to the bottom, so you grab the bottle between two hands and twist them, or rotate them between your palms. The reason why we... Rotating them around like this instead of just shaking the bottle is in order to avoid too many air bubbles in the paint. Once you have mixed the color, we are prepared to commence utilizing it. The, the way we do it is by scraping the brush across one side of the bottle and then the other side, and then we take a little bead of product onto the brush. We position it directly in the center of the nail at this point, precisely around the cuticle area. We gently apply a light pressure on the brush so that the bristles spread out and create a more even coverage. And then we gradually work the color up towards the cuticle, 
as close as we can possibly get without, of course, making any direct contact with the cuticle area. It is extremely important that we do not hit the skin, but of course, get as close as we possibly can. Driving around the cuticle, removing color from one side of the nail. In that place, I could see that I obtained something on my skin. We will address that in just a second. Once we've finished, we'll seal the open edge. That is the way in which you are unable to see or observe the product. When you observe it from a higher vantage point, it presents an entirely distinct narrative. I swiftly applied a small amount of product onto my skin, and then I procured a lint-free wipe infused with a cleansing solution. Subsequently, I delicately moved the wipe across the area where the product had been applied to my skin. And then it's gone. You can also easily use a rose stick if you don't have a microwave stick. The important thing is just that it gets removed. Now I've applied the color nicely and evenly on one finger. It's crucial not to apply excessive gel polish. Thick layers may wrinkle when exposed to the lamp. Guys, but it can also overflow if you apply a layer that's too thick. So if a good rule of thumb is that if your product flows into the cuticle or moves from where you applied it, then you applied too thick of a layer. Always remember thin layers. It doesn't need full coverage from the first layer. If it's not comprehensive, just be patient. The second coat should provide enough coverage. Thus, I only apply it to the remaining four unpainted nails to ensure a consistent finish. I take a little blob of product onto my brush. Is it in the middle of the name? I apply the product as near to the cuticle as possible. So let's remember to seal the free edge. And if it is that you desire to get even closer to the cuticle than you are able to with your gel polish, then you can utilize a thin art brush. It's a pretty thin pencil that you can just... Increase the color intensity slightly to achieve a slightly closer position to the cuticle without making contact with the skin. Otherwise, you just continue in the same way on all your nails. I have now applied gel polish to all five nails, and they need to undergo the curing process in the lamp for a duration of one minute in order to set properly. When they have cured for a minute, there will be a sticky layer, you know, that sticky layer on the gel polish itself. It's okay, it must not be removed, it can stay there. It's there for the next layer to adhere better. So when you've cured your first coat for a minute, you can just move on to the next step. After applying the first coat, we simply need to apply another coat of gel polish. It is applied in the same manner as the initial layer. So we take a small gem of a product on the brush, apply it to the nail, making sure to get as close to the cuticle as possible without actually hitting it. This helps to achieve a precise and neat application, enhancing the overall look of the nails with minimal effort and mess. On one hand and on the other hand in the middle, and comes out and seals the free edge. We simply do it on the remaining four nails as well. Now I've added a second coat of gel, it just needs to cure in the lamp for 60 seconds. And a red gel polish cured for 60 seconds still has slightly sticky layer or tackiness on surface, just like before. It must stay, not be removed, ensures top coat adheres well to colour. We're ready for next step, applying the top coat. Now it is the perfect time to apply our top coat, and we do it in pretty much the same way as we applied both layers of beautiful gel polish colours. 
It is important that the top coat covers all areas of the nail and color. So we do the same. We've gathered some product and now we're sliding it close to the cuticle. And we need to be aware that we cover up any color we've applied. Gets around perfectly well. And that we, just like all the other teams, also get our free speech sealed again. The top coat is like a protective layer or a protective shield that ensures that the color remains. It has the same meaning, indicating that there are no misalignments when utilizing cleaning products or peeling oranges or any of that stuff, all of these daily chores. Moreover, it provides protection against scratches and is generally extremely important. That is why it is also crucial that it covers all of the surfaces of the nail ensuring comprehensive safeguarding for every part of the nail structure. So obviously the highest ranking code also provides this long lasting shine that you know you really want to have and cherish for a lifetime, without a doubt. To ensure even application, we make sure to apply the top coat evenly to all five fingers during the manicure process. After applying the top coat to all five nails, cure it in the lamp for a minute. When the top coat has cured for a minute, there is no tacky layer left, you know, that sticky feeling. Because our top coat is a no wipe top coat, which means you don't have to wipe. After curing for a minute, it is fully ready for the next location. The last thing we need to do is wash our hands. I've already washed my hands and now we're about to apply nail oil. Nail oil is of utmost importance and when you have finished a nail treatment, it should be applied to both the cuticle and the underside of the nail so that the nail also receives some moisture along with essential fatty acids and nutrients from below for optimal nourishment and health. It needs to be done on all the nails as you've probably heard. Before, the nail is like a branch. If it is completely dry, it breaks very easily. On the other hand, if it is completely fresh and filled with liquid, it will not break as easily as when it is dry. It will simply bend down if you attempt to snap it over. Therefore, the same principle applies to your nail as well. If it is well moistened and has good, good nutrients in you, so it will not break as easily, but just deal with everyday small traumas and maintain its resilience to withstand minor challenges. So it's really important that we constantly make sure to take care of our nails, preferably several times a day, and especially after a nail treatment. After applying oil, our nails look stunningly beautiful and are now fully prepared for immediate use. <laughs>